Should, should I call you uh, Dr. PJ Sinsuela? <laughs> you can call however you want. Uh, people call me from Dr. Vasquez to Dr. PJ to PJ Sinsuela. I just got off a shift. That's why I still have this. I got off at five and I was like, ah, gotta get home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so let's start off with the easy question here for those people who don't know who is pj sinsuela well i'm pj sinsuela pj is like my basically my birth name my birth name is pedro juan but my dad was studying in dc and my little si and my big sister pedro juan was too long and they were like just call him pj so I've been called PJ all my life, and Sinsuela means soulless, like soulless survivor, but it's actually soulless, like no shoes on. Um, my name came playing basketball. I broke a shoe. I broke my 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 sneaker, and a friend was like PJ Sinsuela, because uh, I kept on playing without a sneaker, and I found I looked for different meanings, and it basically means that I want to leave like a footprint. Everybody has their own footprint. You could step on a mountain with the best shoe but it's someone else gonna have it. But if you step like soulless or without a shoe, then you leave a, a, a footprint or, or for, for next generations, like a, a message. Pero that's P.A. Sinsuela. I'm a, I'm a musician, a rapper. I write everything that I, that I rap, I produce, and I am currently working as a doctor in Puerto Rico as well. So is your music, is your way of leaving a footprint um, for future generations? that's that's the plan uh basically i talk about everything in my music uh from like social issues to just songs to dance and drink and have fun to sad songs to love songs uh there you could get to know me through my music and i think everybody has like their ups and downs and everybody has crazy thoughts sometimes so i try to put all of that in in my music and try to but I think art should be honest, so I try to be as honest as I can to, through my art, which is rapping. So when did you get that music tune for yourself? I've been developing it for some time, I guess. When I was like 15 or 16, I went to a bilingual school in Puerto Rico, and we started improvising in lunchtime. So basically the first four periods or classes I was rhyming I was like writing rhymes because I was gonna diss other people and there was this kid in my school who rapped um I used to be a huge fan at the beginning of like Blink 182 some 41 and then we started listening to like Eminem and Outkast and then Logic, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Mac Miller and we just he, he told me like oh why don't you write songs for me and he used to sing reggaeton so I started writing Spanish songs because I used to improvise and rap in Spanish. And one day he told me, come, come to the studio with me. And from there on, I started going to the studio to rap. And once you start doing music, you just fall in love with it. So I've been basically writing and rapping ever since. It, it sounds like you never s stopped uh, the music. So how did you end up in medical school? Well, it started as a hobby. I, I, I love to write, but I, I knew I wasn't that good when I was a kid. I was like, my friends, some of my friends liked it. And since I really didn't care, I used to do like crazy things on, 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 on a show. So I used to jump from the, from the stage, which I still do. So my, so my shows were always put, filled with friends and people who just wanted to go like have fun. But it was a hobby. I wanted to be a veterinarian and I started studying then I applied to med school, I got in, and really in med school, before I got into med school, I knew I wasn't gonna have time to like drop music. So that summer, I, I recorded like 10 songs, and then I started dropping them uh, like every three months. And in, in the biggest colleges in Puerto Rico, I went and I did a, a I went to sing in a, in a pub, I hadn't sang, as PJ Sinsuela, which was like a new rapper name. And when I went, it was like 200 people, but everybody knew the six, six songs that I had dropped while I was in med school. And then suddenly it was 400, suddenly it was 800, and I got invited to festivals. And when I graduated, I just went to sing in Argentina, Mexico, uh, España, United States, Republica Dominicana, Costa Rica, 
Colombia, Chile. So I've been like just singing around and getting to know the world. And and you still managed to finish med school despite all this busy schedule. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I graduated from med school that and then that like last fourth year, I was like, okay, am I really gonna do this? So I got into like an investigation uh, in in colon cancer because I I didn't want to go to do a specialty because that would take too much time off from my from my from my music and I said I was gonna do it for a year and then it just kept on summing up and now I'm working in a hospital due to the pandemic I, I was always like there were like little migajas in English it means like. Like when you break a cookie, like parts of a cookie, like bread, breadcrumbs. breadcrumbs. During the way, a lot of things happened that I knew, like, I wanted to, to go and work as a doctor and try to unite uh, the music with, with my other passion. Because uh, I kept on reading and, and trying to learn about, about medicine and music. And this year, I just went back, but I'm still dropping songs every month. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're leaving footprints everywhere. That that's that's definitely yeah. good. You're a good role model. Um, in in the case, how much how much does uh, Puerto Rico influence you, the island? Uh, uh my music is basically a hundred percent influenced by Puerto Rico, since it affects me, it affects my family, my friends. I talk a lot about social issues too and personal issues. And I think that what you read, what you listen in the radio, the, when, when you go to a bar, how nice the people are, or how rude they are, that's gonna affect your mood and, and what you go home to, to think about and write. So Puerto Rico is definitely uh, probably my biggest influence in my music. And you'll see it, if you listen to it, you'll definitely uh, get part of what Puerto Rico is, is about through my lyrics. Yeah, I think uh, the hospital, the, me the medicine also influenced your music too, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> I think that I, w I always said that my music wouldn't be my music without my experience as a doctor, as a student, because that love for, for the language and for using the words that I use, which are uh, typical for, for, uh, for a rapper um, or for a musician are due to the background on the things that I read and that I learn. Uh, I, I dropped a freestyle a couple of weeks ago called Vital before the elections and it's about it's a it's a story that I blow up uh, a stage and then I end up going to the hospital and they're gonna lock me up or send me to jail for blowing up a stage and then I just start rapping about my life and before I go to jail I'm like wait I gotta say all these things and I talk about Puerto Rico and on just I like social injustices. I have, I have that. Um, so it definitely influences me since I'm out of time in the hospital. How, how does it feel in your young career that you have worked with so many great other artists in the, in the Latin industry? It, it feels great. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, at the beginning, I was, I, I'm all, I think the industry has changed a lot. And that collaborating now is a must, but it's also a plus. Um, at the beginning, I was like, I used to be a fan of all the rappers who didn't collaborate with anybody. I'm like, nah, this is my rapper. I like this musician. But now due to the industry and the algorithms, like you need to collaborate. And I think that for me, it's been fun because I've, I, I've been able to collaborate with people that I admire a lot, like Jorge Drexler. He's a, he's a 40, 50 year old, uh, who's been probably my favorite, like, uh, cantautor. He sings, like, it's not ballads. I don't know how to explain it, but he's probably one of the best writers. He's like a Bob Dylan for me. He's like my Bob Dylan, and I could collaborate with him. That's, for me, that's crazy. And I've also collaborated with Alt J, which is like a, a Britannic, uh, that people should know him, band. Uh, for me, the internet did that. Uh, I've traveled, I've worked with Bad Bunny, with Nejo, Residente, uh, so it's, it's been fun. Did, did they all find you or you basically seek them out? It's, it's been like half and half. Uh, 
the the biggest collaborations the bad bunny collaboration he actually wrote to me on twitter i, I already met him because we started at the same time basically rapping and and we were from the same generation uh, starting off in soundcloud and stuff so we had met in parties and he wrote like hey i love that song that you started and i'm like get on and and he just jumped on it uh, Jorge Drexler, i showed him the song out day actually uh, someone from atlantic wrote Like, hey, we love what you do. We're doing like a collabo album. Do you want to jump on an Al Jay song? And I used to love a music video that they had, and I was like, this is so weird that I just got an email to collaborate with them. That was crazy. Uh, so it's been like half and half. Sometimes I just, and it's been through phone, email, Instagram. Like, hey, I got this song. I thought about you. This is my number, and I hear it out, and we just work it. That's amazing. Well, let's talk about that single that you did with Jorge, uh, Loco Licoto, Liquito. Um, talk about how you came up with that song, how you wrote it. Well, uh, Loco Loquito means like uh, cr a, little, a little bit crazy, I guess. It's, it's a little bit crazy, but it's, it's a song. It's the song that it, that's taken me the most to write because the first 120 words start with the letter E in, in English. Uh, when people talk, sometimes they'll be like, um, um, I want to do this. And um, in, in Spanish, we say, eh, eh, que, eh, and you say that when you're nervous, which is basically the letter E. So I tried to write a song that's a conversation with, between two people who are in love, but they don't know each other and they're nervous. And basically it's a conversation that the first 120 letters start with the E. And I just started writing like every word that I knew uh, in a paper. And I had like 500 words and I, I didn't want to use a dictionary because I didn't want it to be like extra complicated, even though I think it, you could understand it, but it's still a little bit complicated because everything starts with the E. And that's the, that's the theme of the song. And then the second verse is basically like Jorge sings the chorus and it's got violins and cellos and, and it's got a clarinet and a bass flute. Uh, or a bass flute, I'm, I'm not sure how you say it. And then the second verse is basically you're in love. Uh, and I rap about, I use like Disney characters, like 20 Disney characters, but I use them in a, like hidden or in metaphoric ways. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting song. How, how long did you manage to compile all those words? Because I've, I, I've, I've seen your music video because it is, and all those words were, were E, and I, and I couldn't comprehend, like, how did you pull the, all that together? That must have took you a long time. Yeah, it took me like a month. Oh. Like, uh, like a month. I, I was just like, I had a notebook that I, I just sat down and write. And once I got, once I started like putting, I usually get the song from beginning to end, or I write, I got this chorus, I like it, okay, let's write the two verses. This song, I knew I wanted it to be a conversation, so I wrote like, like uh, a four. We call it a four, but basically, I started just writing a, like conversation parts that made sense, and then I started putting it all together. So it's been a, a it was a pro, a very different process than my usual writing process. So you're just not just a, only a musician; you're also a poet too. <laughs> I, I like writing. I, I like writing. I. My mom writes children's book, so since I was little, she would be like, oh, do you know a rhyme for this? And I'd be like, okay, and I'd like help her out. I also have a, I, I wrote a children's book. I wrote a couple, but one that's, that's uh, published. It's called Smart is the New Cool. I wrote it during like med school and it got published. So uh, yeah, I like writing. You are very talented. So is this single part of an album that, uh, that you're coming out with? Uh, yes, like right now, I don't know if it's an album or just a bunch of songs together or what's it called? Because it, I was going to drop an album this 2020. It was my first album, but I had to hold it on. I have to like hold it because, well, the pandemic, I love sing, like singing live and it's not a possibility. So I'm dropping a song each month. I actually dropped a new song called Duolingo. And it's a song that I rap in English and Spanish. So for people who, it's the first song, I've rapped in English in a, in a couple of songs, but it's the first song that it's like 
since I'm from Puerto Rico, we've been a colony of the United States since 18, well, since 1898. And English is very much in our, in our culture. So I started rapping and, and I, it has a music video, Duolingo, that you could look for it. And you could see kind of like, I, I rapped the same intensity in English and in Spanish. So I think you can get to know what I'm saying in Spanish a little bit by actually listening to my English part if you don't understand Spanish as well. I, I, did, I did actually check out that, uh, that, that, okay. that song. So it, 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 it's, it's terrific. Um, so, so your preference is to sing in Spanish though, right? Yes, it's, it's my first language. And, and I think it's, it's a beautiful language. It's my preference. But since I have, I don't know, I've been a fan of a lot of like, rappers and english musicians so i also like to to integrate it in, in some songs it's not in all of them i rap and sing more in spanish and it comes out more naturally i guess uh, even though i think spanish is a more complicated and probably it's a harder language to like master writing because you have accents and the rhyme schemes are a little bit more you have to be a little bit more it's i don't know perfectionist in english you could like change the endings and it kind of rhymes even if it doesn't end the same in Spanish it's a little bit different but it's very eh, I'm, a bit, eh, I'm back eh, but yeah I think it's challenging and it's fun a lot of your music videos as of late are animations is that is that what you love you you love the animation work I I'm a fan of of animation but it's also been it's also been due to COVID and due to my time since I'm in a hospital and sometimes if it's a song that I know that that someone can animate, I have a couple of friends or people who I know who work as animators and I just talk to them, Mira. So I'm trying to do like, I do a song that's a video where I could appear and we could work it and then I try to do an animation and we just go back and forth. But I, but I like animations a lot. It, they're, 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 your videos are beautiful. Well, let, let me start wrapping things up uh, with you because obviously we're still in COVID times right now and we will probably will still be in COVID times just for hopefully for the next few months. Um, how are you staying creative while working as a doctor at this time? And do you expect your full album to be released next year? I definitely expect that album to be released next year. I think that... Uh, I actually think I'm more creative actually working in a hospital. When you're a full-time musician, you're basically, I write by myself in a studio. So you're in your house trying to find the muse. Here, I'm just talking with patients and seeing crazy things happen because people are crazy. And that's where <laughs> inspiration comes. Or you're just watching the news and everything that's happening. And I think that also this complicated time, uh, Complicated times make you more creative. Uh, at least that's my opinion. So I think that I, I'm getting a couple of ideas of things that I want to work with. Right now I'm studying also and working a lot. So it's hold it like I'm not writing every day, mm -hmm. as I would love to. But but I'm 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 a pos positive or optimistic with the future. Absolutely. Well, hey, congratulations. Uh PJ, um, I, I look forward to uh, your full album ne next year. And hey, thank, thank you for you. leaving your footprint in both in the music and the medical industries. You're doing no, a great I, service. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And before leaving, I want to tell you that next Friday, I'm dropping a song with Pedro Capo. He's, uh, he's a huge and great musician from Puerto Rico. Uh, it's called Bailame. And it's a video with no social distancing but we recorded it before covid it was like uh, at the end of 2019 and it's dropping next friday bailame means like dance with me and it's a beautiful like uh, like dance hall uh, african caribbean song uh, the music is great so check it out i know you're gonna like it i know you're gonna love the video uh, next friday my youtube channel so hopefully you like it Let's do that. Everyone should check, it, check out your YouTube channel, especially next Friday. Well, hey, thank you very much, PJ. I really appreciate, appreciate the time. Thanks for the time. A pleasure. Thank you. Bye now.
Um, 